Have you ever dreamed of a Linux distribution that isn't just functional but truly beautiful? One that promises a sleek modern desktop, an integrated AI assistant, and the rock-solid reliability of an immutable file system with easy rollbacks? Sounds like the future, doesn't it? Well, today we're diving deep into Deepin25, a Debian-based Linux distribution that's attempting to deliver exactly that. But with such ambitious claims, the big question is, is Deepin25 truly ready for the mainstream spotlight or is it still a work in progress? Let's explore. Deepin is a fascinating project. It's a Debian-based Linux distribution known for developing its very own custom desktop environment, also called Deepin, and introducing its own portable package format known as Lineapps. This isn't just another Linux distro, it's a project with a strong vision for a polished and integrated user experience. Version 25, the latest release, is particularly ambitious, especially considering its predecessor came out less than a year ago. It introduces a significant list of new features. A completely new design and settings panel for the Deepin Desktop Environment, DDE. An integrated AI agent designed to respond to both typed and spoken commands. An expanded Lineapps portable package format, now offering builds for all supported CPU architectures, including x86-64, ARM64, and Lungark64. This is a big step for wider compatibility. And perhaps most intriguing, an immutable file system with automatic snapshots during the update process, making it theoretically easy to roll back any issues. These are some bold claims, and we're here to see how Deepin25 holds up under scrutiny. My journey began by downloading the X build of Deepin, which clocks in at approximately 6 GB. Once you boot from the provided ISO, you're given a crucial choice. Either try the live desktop environment for a quick look or launch the system installer directly. For those opting to install, you're even offered a choice between two Linux kernel versions, 6.6 .6 or 6.12. For my testing, I consistently chose the newer 6.12 kernel. The initial setup is remarkably straightforward. Deepin presents a graphical configuration tool that guides you through the basics. First, you select your language from a list. Then, you accept the distribution's license agreement. Next, you pick your keyboard layout. And finally, you click your location or time zone on a map. If you chose the live desktop option, you're then presented with a graphical login screen. The good news is, you can sign into the default user account and access the desktop session without needing a password. This is convenient for quick testing. Once the live desktop loads, the first thing you notice is the soft blue background, which is the default for the Deepin desktop mirroring the login screen. A familiar panel sits at the bottom of the screen and a few icons populate the desktop itself, including a file manager, the system installer, and a Deepin home icon linking to online resources like support forums and wikis. A welcome window immediately pops up, playing an introductory video that highlights some desktop features. Interestingly, this video is in Chinese, so while I couldn't understand every word, it seemed to discuss the local AI agent and desktop components. After the video, you're given a pivotal choice for your desktop layout, Align Center or Align Left. The Align Center option places panel icons in the middle and uses a full-screen grid of icons as the application menu, giving it a more modern, tablet-like feel. The Align Left option shifts panel icons to the left and presents a traditional two-pane application menu, familiar to most desktop users. I opted for the Align Left layout for my testing. The Welcome window also offers to launch the Software Center, but using a live desktop, I felt it was premature to install new apps, so I put that off. Deepin has always been praised for its aesthetics, and version 25 continues this tradition. The team has done an excellent job creating a desktop that looks sleek and beautiful without being overly distracting. It strikes a fine balance not too flashy, not too sparse, offering just enough customization without overwhelming the user. Thanks to its various themes and layouts, the Deepin desktop environment feels both modern and tablet-like, yet also comfortingly familiar to seasoned desktop users. This adaptability is truly commendable. While Deepin generally performs well, I initially noticed a slight sluggishness, both in a virtual machine and directly on my laptop. It turns out this wasn't due to poor performance, but rather the prevalence of visual animations when opening menus, moving, or minimizing windows. These animations create a pleasing effect but can make the desktop feel less snappy. Thankfully, this is easily customizable. By visiting the System Settings panel and navigating to the Performance Settings, you can shift the desktop's priority between Best Possible Visuals, the default, and Best Performance. Changing this setting to favor performance largely does away with the effects, making the desktop feel much quicker, almost instant in its responses. On my laptop, Deepin performed admirably. All my hardware was detected with audio networking and the touchpad functioning as expected. The touchpad defaults to natural or inverse scrolling, but this can be changed to classic scrolling in the settings panel. 
Even my keyboard's media and shortcut keys work perfectly, contributing to a smooth overall desktop experience. Now let's talk about the installation process, which presented some unexpected hurdles, particularly with disk partitioning. The Deepin System Installer offers three main approaches, guided, manual, or advanced disk partitioning. While the process worked fairly well when installing on a laptop, I encountered significant issues when installing Deepin in a virtual machine. Typically, most Linux distributions will comfortably install into a virtual machine with around 32 GB to 40 GB of assigned disk space. However, Deepin's guided partitioning approach was different. It insisted on at least 45 GB of free disk space, threatening to refuse installation otherwise. So I expanded my virtual disk to 60 GB and tried again. This is where things got really puzzling. During the guided partitioning phase, I was asked how much space to assign to the root partition and how much to user data, presumably the home partition. The installer then refused to allow me to assign more than 27 GB of space to the root partition. This felt incredibly odd. It demanded 45 GB initially, but then wouldn't let me allocate more than 27 GB to the core system. The situation escalated further when I tried to proceed. The installer flatly refused to accept the 27 GB root partition, claiming it actually needed a full 64 GB of space for the operating system. Let that sink in first, it asked for 45 GB, then limited me to 27 GB for root, and finally demanded 64 GB to proceed. This contradictory experience was quite a mess. Feeling frustrated, I went back and tried the manual partitioning option. Surprisingly, the manual approach was nearly identical to the guided one. The manual partitioning screen also refused to allow me to assign more than 27 GB to my root partition. However, unlike the guided mode, the manual approach did allow me to continue with just a 27 GB root partition, with the rest of the disk allocated to the user data partition. This experience led me to wonder if different parts of the installer were developed by separate teams, each with their own arbitrary size limits. After finally navigating this perplexing partitioning, the installer copies its files and prompts for a restart. The very first time you boot into your locally installed Deepin, you're asked to create a username and password. You're also given an option for quick login, which I believe means automatic login without a password, and are asked again to confirm your language, keyboard layout, time zone, and location. A final wizard screen reports configuring the system for a few minutes before presenting the graphical login. The most astonishing revelation came after installation. Despite all the struggle and the installer's demands for 45 GB or even 64 GB, Deepin only required 7.1 GB of disk space for the operating system itself. It also set up 6.1 GB of files on the data partition, bringing the total disk usage to a mere 13.2 GB. This is a staggering difference from the space it demanded during installation, rendering all that struggle pointless. The 7.1 GB for the OS seemed normal, but I was curious about the data partition. It turned out to contain a mix of Deepin-specific applications, settings, log files, and strangely enough, Canon printer drivers. Deepin uses the X4 file system for its guided and manual partitioning options. One of Deepin's unique aspects is its software ecosystem. Most of the desktop applications included in Deepin are custom-created in-house. These include the text editor, calendar, mail client, file manager, video player, and music player, all tending to resemble their GNOME counterparts in design. The web browser, simply called Browser, is based on Chromium and offers a fairly vanilla Chromium experience with some deep in rebranding. LibreOffice is one of the few applications included that isn't part of the deep in desktop environment family. These in house applications are generally simple, uncluttered, and highly functional. Their layouts focus on doing one thing well with minimal distractions, akin to GNOME applications or Zaps. The media players even come with codecs for playing various audio and video files. A major point of praise, despite Deepin being a Chinese-developed distribution, the applications are consistently and thoroughly translated into English. A significant effort has clearly gone into making this distribution accessible to English speakers, which is something I greatly appreciated. Behind the scenes, the distribution includes a full range of manual pages, the GNU command line utilities, and the GNU compiler suite. Systemd is used for init functions, and as mentioned, you get to choose between Linux kernel versions 6.6 .6 or 6.12 during installation. Deepin attempts to simplify software management with its unified software center, aptly named App Store. This store is designed to handle both traditional deb packages and the distribution's Lineapps portable package format seamlessly. The App Store is divided into two panes with six tabs on the left, recommended open source Lineapps categories update and manage. While much of the Deepin distribution and its applications performed well during my trial, the App Store was a glaring exception. This software center regularly locked up while I was using it, typically forcing me to close the application. In several instances, the App Store crashed so severely that it took down the entire desktop environment with it, forcing me to restart the desktop or even reboot the computer.
this was a persistent and frustrating problem. Even when it did work, the App Store was slow to respond, often taking several seconds to display information pages for applications. Furthermore, searches for applications frequently return multiple seemingly identical results. Upon closer inspection, I could tell one was for a Deb package and the other for a Lineapps package, but there's no clear way to differentiate them without clicking on each entry and viewing its information page. This makes it difficult for users to quickly choose their preferred package format. It's worth noting that while the App Store can handle updates, a separate section of the Settings panel also provides quick access to software updates. I had no problems fetching and applying updates through the Settings panel, suggesting the core update mechanism works, but the App Store front-end is deeply flawed. Lastly, I could not find a command-line tool for Lineapps packages, meaning the App Store seems to be the only way to manage them. Deepin's release announcement proudly describes the distribution as being immutable. This is a significant claim, as typically an immutable distribution features a mostly read-only file system, where traditional package managers like DNF or apt wouldn't usually work. However, Deepin presents a puzzling contradiction here. While it is harder to accidentally create or delete files under system directories like slash usr, for example, attempting sudo touch usr slash bin slash abc will result in a read-only file system error, this immutability doesn't apply consistently. I discovered that I could still run the apt command line package manager or use the app store to install deb packages directly into the slash usr directory. I successfully installed applications like Falcon and Nmap to slash usr slash bin and the Fortune program to slash usr slash games, all without any issues or requiring a reboot. This behavior is highly unusual. It means that while I as the root user cannot directly write to slash usr, the package manager also run by the root user somehow can. This paradox is not explained in the documentation, and it leaves me puzzled and somewhat concerned about the system's reliability. It suggests Deepin doesn't act like a fully immutable distribution. Instead, it only guards against some common mistakes, leading to a semi-immutable nature that doesn't inspire confidence. Furthermore, despite the claim of automatic snapshots during the update process to make it easy to roll back any issues, I found no evidence of this functionality. After performing package updates, there were no old versions of the operating system available for me to select from the boot menu. In essence, Deepin appears to be on the path to becoming truly immutable, but it's clearly only halfway there, offering the limitations of an immutable system without the perks of easy rollbacks. The much-touted AI agent, or UOS AI, is a headline feature of Deepin 25. It can be launched directly from the desktop panel or activated with the convenient Meta Key Plus Spacebar shortcut. My first interaction with the AI application was met with a warning. English support was not yet satisfactory. Given Deepin's Chinese origins, this seemed like a fair limitation at first. You can link the local AI application to online AI LLM accounts, but I started with the default agent as it requires no account and is free to use. My initial questions were simple. I asked if there was a command line utility for managing Lineapps packages. The AI agent responded by saying it didn't know of any such tool as Lineapps, instead suggesting I might have meant the Lynx command line web browser and even offering tips on how to install Lynx. Answers from the AI agent were always preceded by several seconds of LLM rational thought processing, but the answers themselves were consistently generic or empty. For instance, when I asked how much memory my system was using, the AI agent replied with generic advice on how to look up memory usage statistics on macOS and Linux command lines, seemingly unaware it was even running on a Linux system. I tried switching the AI agent to Deepin Assistant, which required a trip to the App Store to download an add-on and then relaunching the AI application. Even then, the Deepin Assistant agent had no information about Lineapps. When asked about disk space, it simply responded by telling me Deepin's minimal disk space requirements. And perhaps most telling, when I asked if the Deepin desktop environment ran on a Wayland or X11 session, the AI agent flatly stated that it didn't know. For the record, Deepin desktop environment runs an X11 session using the Quinn window manager. While I understand language limitations, the agent consistently understood my queries and responded in fluent English. However, its inability to answer any of my questions, especially those pertaining to the Deepin distribution itself, is a pretty severe oversight. It begs the question, why wouldn't the developers at least feed their own AI agent information from their own documentation and systems? If the Deepin team wants the AI agent to offer support to their users, this is a critical area for improvement. After spending a significant amount of time with Deepin 25, my overall impression is that it's a distribution with a lot of truly good ideas, many of which look great but most of which are simply not complete. It strikes me as a distribution aimed at a more mainstream audience with features like a modern glass-themed desktop, a built-in AI agent, and an immutable file system. While these aren't necessarily features I personally seek, the Deepin team deserves credit for attempting to deliver them. 
Let's break down the final verdict. The Deepin desktop environment is undeniably beautiful, easy to navigate, and highly flexible. The team has put a commendable effort into polishing its look and feel. However, its stability was a persistent problem, with the desktop locking up or crashing a handful of times, particularly during software installations or updates. This was a significant and recurring issue. The unified App Store, while a great concept for package management, proved to be slow and frequently locked up, making it difficult to recommend to newcomers yet. The system installer is streamlined and easy to navigate, which is a plus. But its confusing and contradictory disk space requirements, demanding 64 GB, only allowing 27 GB to be assigned, and then using less than 14 GB make absolutely no sense. The AI agent is pleasantly accessible, but its inability to answer even basic questions about the Deepin distribution itself is a major flaw. Finally, while the Deepin team is making progress with an immutable file system, it feels only sort of immutable, with limitations but none of the promised rollback perks. In short, Deepin 25 feels like a very good beta release that successfully showcases some great ideas and well-considered features. However, it's abundantly clear that virtually none of these features are finished yet, or they simply aren't ready for public use. It's an interesting and capable beta, but in its current state, it is not something that is ready for its target audience to download and use as a daily driver, at least not yet. It's a project to watch, certainly, but patience is required.